Hi, welcome. We're Board Game Opinions. Uh, my name's Steve Rain. I'm Ankush Candlewell. And we're going to be watching and commentating on the final, the World Sports, uh, World Mind Sports Olympiad Catan tournament. Uh, well, Ankush, I believe you played in this? I did play in this. I didn't reach the final table. So this is the final table of the Catan Olympiad Championships at the Mind Sports Olympiad 2017. Um, and we're going to have White's going to go first. Would you like to introduce the players to us? Sure. So... In the top left, we have Martin Hobogami, who is a very strong Estonian mind sports player. He, his best game is Renju, but he's excellent at many different games. He's quite a young guy, isn't he, Martin? Yes, I believe he's 19. Very young. Yes. Uh, in the top right, we have uh, mind sports legend Demis Hasabis. He's won the Pentamind World Championships five times the most out of anyone and he's also an incredible guy away from the games table he's uh, the founder of DeepMind the AI company and that's the company that made the Go uh, program that beat the best players yes it made uh, AlphaGo and uh, AlphaZero as well the top chess engine that recently uh, destroyed Stockfish in the bottom right we have Ricardo Gomez who is uh, one of the best games players in the world right now. He's, I believe his best game is Stone Age. I think he's won the world championships for that, but he competes at a very high level in many games. And you actually played a Ricardo on, on his way to the final, I believe. Yes, he, he got the better of me and sort of knocked me out of contention. Um, but yeah, he's from Portugal and very nice guy and a great games player. I'm in the bottom left. We have Mike Dixon, who's uh, a world-class games player too. I believe he won the Eurogames World Championship last year. And he, he specialises in Eurogames and Settlers is one of his strong suits. Um, so now the board's set up then. So one of the things I wanted to talk to you at the start is that the start is really key in Catan. One of the key bits of it is getting really good um, first couple of placements. Definitely. This um, is the most important phase of the game. I'd say a large part of the game is decided here. Uh, so the, the players will probably take quite a lot of time to carefully decide where to place. So if you had to give some tips to people who are not necessarily um, familiar with the strategy behind their placements, what would you say to them? You should pick uh, intersections with the most number of pips, as they call it, on uh, the so, board. So underneath the numbers there are pips, which I believe tells you how often you're going to roll that number out of 36 times. The different combinations are 2d6, so um, if you, you're going to roll a 12 once, so that's got one pip, but you're going to roll a 6 or an 8 five times out of 36 times, that's got five pips. You're talking about the total number of pips underneath the numbers. That's what I meant. And also you want to have a good balance of resources, so you're able to do, uh, build the different types of buildings you can in Settlers. So like White in this particular case has gone for a three resource um, starting spot. It's a 1085, which is a pretty strong one. Yes. Uh, on this board, it looks like grain is relatively scarce, so this seems like a good starting position. I say it's quite scarce because there are four hexes of numbers 12, 11 and 10, which are relatively infrequent dice rolls, but there's also the grain 8 at the bottom. But sheep's also quite scarce as well. In fact, it's probably possibly even scarcer, but it's, is sheep less useful than grain? I'd say sheep is the least important resource in settlers. I'd say grain is very important because you need it for both settlements and cities um, whereas sheep uh, you don't need for cities and although it's useful for development cards so is grain okay but there, so if we're looking at the sheep then there's a 2 and 11 and a 3 which aren't great and then a 10 which is only a bit better yes So you can see that people are taking their time on this. Obviously, it's been a couple of minutes since White placed their first one, and uh, uh, Demis is still thinking. In terms of pips, so yeah, I was just going to say, in terms of pips, that's possibly the best spot on the board. It's a 965, which gets you 13 pips. That's correct. Uh, I think that's the most number of pips you can possibly get in Settlers. So, and it's a, even though this uh, it has two brick. Hexes uh, next to it. It's 
a very strong spot. I'm not surprised at all that he went there. Because if he gets the right numbers, he can start to expand quite quickly because he can get his roads better than possibly other people can. So why did it take him so long to go there? Do you think the fact that it's got two brick rather than a mixture of hexes uh, made him think a bit more? I think he was just considering his options. He was also possibly thinking, if I go on the 5-6-9 now, where will my second settlement go? Depending on where Ricardo and Mike go after me. So he might have been trying to plan ahead and see what they do. And ultimately he decided this was the best. Because that's what's going through Ricardo's mind now, because he's going to have only two settlements placed in between his first and second one. So he can actually have a good long think about what uh, the blue player Mike might do. Yes. So if you were Ricardo, where do you think, what would your choices be between? Or are you trying to, are you trying to do what, what he's doing and trying to think what Mike's going to do as well? I think my preferred spot here would be the 10 8 4 near the bottom because green is quite scarce in this game and there don't seem to be other great candidate moves. Okay, also sheep's quite scarce as well and that's the best sheep space. Oh, you, you're right, he's gone there. He's gone there. And so then Mike gets two, and obviously there is an advantage in going fourth in that um, in the game you st your starting resources are the resources of your second settlement, and Mike's the only one who can guarantee knowing where his second one's going to be when he's placing his first one, isn't it? That is one advantage of going um, in last place. You get to decide which resources you want. But more importantly, in my opinion, you also get to have like perfect coordination between your two uh, settlements. If, if you're in any of the other places, someone else might take your intended spot for your second hex. But here you have the perfect knowledge that no one can mess up your plans. So if you want to, you can guarantee getting a mixture of all five resources given the context of the board? If you want to. Well, it's not necessarily a good idea to have access to all the resources. Sometimes it can be good to skip one resource just because it's not integral to your strategy. Okay, so if you're planning on building roads and settlements, you don't necessarily need all, for example. That's, that's one possible route. Although, if you, if you do choose what I call the brick road strategy, uh, brick wood strategy to build lots of roads, you'll, you might quickly get to seven victory points by building five settlements, by having five settlements and the longest road, but then building that city becomes especially difficult with no access to ore. Uh, unless you can build a port, is there any advantage to starting with one of your first two settlements on a port? I wouldn't recommend that your first settlement or your first two settlements be on a port because it really cripples your early game economy by missing out on that extra number. And also if it's your second settlement you'll miss out on a resource as well. Yes, but maybe later on it can be a good idea to build towards a port to have a favourable exchange rate. Yeah. Or if you get a port like for example of red can get a port that sells brick for two for one. That would be perfect. And that would be good for red. So yeah, I can't quite see what the ports are offering around the board because the picture we've got is quite small. But Blue's still thinking. You can see that obviously this game, this match took about just over about an hour and 10 minutes in total. And we're nearly 10 minutes in and Blue's still thinking. In fact, uh, each we've only had three of the eight um, settlements out first time. Can you, uh, can you, can you uh, ever play a game of Settlers and realise you're probably not going to win based on where you've started? That can definitely happen, especially if someone screws you over um, by like blocking you off. and It can definitely happen in a four-player game, but you're never truly out of it in Settlers. Because obviously there is the, that dice element as well. You could just get, you know, if everyone else has got the eights and you haven't and no eights are rolled, you're actually an advantage. Yeah? Yes. So if you had to pick then, Ankush, between starting first, second, third or fourth, what would you pick? I think going fourth gives you the best chances in most board positions and settlers because of that opportunity for perfect coordination. But then afterwards I'd say first can be a good pick, especially if there's one very powerful hex um, or intersection that you want to go for to begin with. Yeah, especially if there's one resource that's around and you can get a really good spot that includes the best hex for that resource as well. I think the dream would be the 965 or double or one green. If you could have that, I would go first any day. Okay. 
but sometimes going first can be a bit disadvantageous because it might come back around to you and literally everything on the board has gone and there's no good place for your second settlement that can that can make it quite poor so your first one has to be pretty good to offset the negative consequence of having yes. to go last especially if the other players play tactically against you by blocking like blocking off any potential second placement you can have um, so Blues placed their two, they've decided to place their second one to get a wood, a grain and a brick to start with. And they've taken a 9-6-3 and an 11-5-4 to start with. So actually Orange is, and Orange has made a quick placement there, they've taken the 4-3-8 uh, up where the double um, ore is. So Orange actually start, in his starting hand has two ore, so he might be looking to start off with a city if, if he can get access to another ore into grain. He does have the, uh, the, the grain eight, so it's not an infrequent outcome for him to roll the grain. So I think that's his early game strategy. It's, uh, it shows you the strength of that first placement for Orange actually. Block it effectively, placing their blocks the grain eight from anyone else. Someone could take the eight three hex. Maybe player one might do that, Martin, if there's nothing else on the board for him, but I think that's relatively unlikely. So if Martin is on, but if Martin is on the um, brick wood strategy, as you say, that might be decent because you get grain and sheep there. Yes. Which are the other things you need for the settlements? But usually you, d you don't want to go on uh, on a port to begin with, right. as we discussed. So there's an 11.63 spot available. I don't know how good that is. 11 is obviously not a great number to get. I'm trying to, f I'm trying to see any other good spots to go. I've just noticed that Martin's first placement, he built the road towards the center. It's quite possible that this road is gonna be dead. I don't really like the, the, the placement of it. I think he would have done better to build it towards the edge and then. Do you think anyone's gonna take that center spot, that 10, 11, three spot with a double grain? I think Demis is certainly considering it. Okay, actually there's a better one, isn't it? There? There's a 10, 11, 9, one space away. Yeah, that would Which would also better. block the same spot, wouldn't it? Would. it? Because that seems like a sensible one as well. So if Demis takes that. I think it's, if he's deciding between the 9, 10, 2 and the 9, 10, 11. I think 9, 10, 11 is stronger. Even though the, t the 9, 10, 2 would give him one sheep, which he would otherwise not have access to, you're twice as likely to roll an 11 than a 2. So throughout the game, I think the 11 will be more profitable. And you also block white. I don't You'd know if that's a block. consideration. It is a minor consideration, definitely. Yeah, and then there's another spot in the middle, a 6, 11, 3, you could actually build a road to that and be one away from it. Yes. Although, I think that might be where Martin's going to go with his second one. There is, a, there is a converse as well. You can actually build a 10-9-2 spot and get a development card on your first turn. I think that's what's going through Demis's head right now. So if it wasn't the fact that that gave you a, a guaranteed development card, maybe that 11-10-9 space is better? Also, I think if, if Demis were to go on the 9-10-11, there's nowhere uh, to build towards for his second uh, settlement. True, it's at least, well, unless, unless you can get the 6 3 11 spot. But I think Martin's going to occupy that with his second placement. So it would be a dead settlement. And although. You, you can see he's, he's already realised that it's probably going to be dead because he's, he's thinking of building away from it. On the other hand, I think going. I mean, Demis is probably aiming for the longest road in this game because he's got two bricks and one wood hex already with with high numbers but he's always he's, he's, al gonna... he's already decided that martin's going to build in the middle yeah he has he has because he's built his road away so yeah. demons his second road is pointing away but martin hasn't taken the grain he's taken the sheep he's already got one grain he's already got one grain yeah so he's, he's gone for the sheep he's gone for a balanced strategy and we're starting the game now okay that's a five generates a uh, wooden brick uh, Martin's decision was quite clear there actually, because now he can build this road towards the centre. And, uh, and he's, he's first to get to that spot, the yeah. 10, 10, 11, 3 spot in the yes. centre.
So now that uh, people have placed at the start, who do you think came off best from those four initial placements? We could count the pit. We could count the pips, but it just in based on you know rarity of resource or anything like that. That's a difficult question. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> analysis. I'm having a look. Another five. Five's come up a couple of times now. Favours everyone but uh, Ricardo, who's not got a five under his control, I'm afraid. Does it, another question for you while you're thinking about who's come off best is that uh, sometimes when you place your second one, you find you get a lot of some, some of the similar numbers that your first one gets. Yes. In fact, if we look at Ricardo's position, he's, his numbers that he's on in the top are 843. And in the bottom, it's eight, four, ten. So he's like really heavily on eights and fours, which means uh, if they come up, he might be in good shape. And if not, he will get obliterated. So he's so he's actually increasing the variance on his strategy. That can be a good thing to do, definitely. Just in a four-player game specifically. The downside is you have a higher probability of tribute risk, which means during settlers, if you have more than seven cards in your hand and a seven is rolled then you lose half the cards in your hand. And when you, when you stack up on numbers, you're more likely to get all your cards together on one turn, and there's a higher chance of losing your cards. Yeah. That can be an argument against choosing that strategy. But on the other hand, as you say, you, you might want to increase the variance and just hope to roll well, then you, you can win the game. Because if you have cities on other people's turns, then they roll an eight and you get four resources on someone else's turn, you just start stacking up quite quickly, don't you? Definitely. Um, so we can see a couple of early ro uh, an early road for red building towards that port. Doesn't get great numbers, but that port must be useful for him, I guess. I think that uh, for after your initial placements, building towards good numbers is merely a bonus. It's more about just seeking opportunities of good places to grow towards. We can see Ricardo must have got some uh, the oil and grain he said he wanted. He's already got a city down on the ten eight four spot near the bottom. Yes, so and he's still got five resources left. It looks like he's had very strong starts to the game. Yeah. Takes an early lead. He's on three points. Everyone else is on two currently. But Orange is unlikely to get the longest road in this case. One, he's not really got um, great access to wood necessarily. He's only got a single four. Um, you, don't, you don't usually need to get... It's important to have one of longest road or largest army. It's difficult to win a game without either. Although it can happen in some end game positions. Because if you buy enough development cards and fail to get the largest army, you're probably going to pick up the odd victory point card on the way, aren't you? You will. But it's... In general, it's you want to have one of those, aim for one of those at least. Yeah. Usually, it's specifically one of those. Yeah. So yeah, Orange is not going to compete for the longest road at all. Uh, but the other three players... Might. Red, Red's kind of pointing the opposite direction, isn't he? He is pointing the opposite direction, but on the other hand, he's the player with the most access to brick and wood, which would help him build roads. So he might just waste two settlements on the right and build I along. Think, I think White's got the same access. White's got the six and eight brick. In fact, White's got better access and they've both got five or nine wood. You're right. So White actually might do it and White's actually nearer to doing it in terms of White's And actually... he's more connected as well. Yeah. You are correct. Uh, White's actually close to building a spot in the 10, 3, 11 spot in the middle, which will help towards getting his longest road and it will stop someone else coming along and trying to break it up. Because if you can build that, no one can break as long as road up if you connect them. That's correct. So, uh, how, how, what's the format of this? Because you said someone knocked you out, Ricardo knocked you out of contention. How many matches do you have to play before the final? So, I think there were three rounds uh, of qualification, after which the top four places would would go to the final table that we're looking at right now, and out of those, the winner will win the gold medal to become the 
Olympiad champion. Yeah. Which uh, you won one year, I believe. I didn't win. I've never won the Settlers tournament. Uh, but I've won a few other tournaments. Yeah. The overall Olympiad champion, though, you won, didn't you? Oh, that's so. Yes, this is part of the Mind Sports Olympiad, and uh, this the tournament takes place over one and a half weeks in London, and there's a an overall competition called the Pence Mind World Championships, which takes into account all of the different games uh, played throughout the two weeks. And whoever does best in their top five events will win the Pen to Mind World Championships. Uh, I did win that once in 2013, yeah. tied with Andres Kusk, the very strong Estonian games player. And I've missed out more recently, I've come second quite a few times, okay. but my time will come again. This isn't your strongest event though, is it? What, is your, what are your strong events in this? I would say Settlers is one of my strong events. Oh, okay. Uh, but I'd say maybe uh, Acquire and Poker are also some of my stronger events. You can see people having stacks of cards, so I can look at the cardos. You must have more than seven there, recently, but they're trying to negotiate a trade, I believe. They haven't rolled a seven yet. There's no robber being moved. So when you roll, um, so when you roll a seven, are you what are you trying to do with it? Does it depend on the stage of the game? Are you trying to kneecap the lead, or are you trying to get a resource you want? So if you know someone who is not doing very well but probably has the brick you need, would you be more likely to steal off them? Or usually, it really depends. Like if you need that, if you've got a hand of two or and two green, and you want that extra or and or is really difficult to get for you in that in your position, then sure, you might steal off the player who's most likely to give you that ore to build your city. But usually you would just want to attack the leader and put it on the, the number that gives them the highest income or the most threatening income. Uh, or you should, especially in the early games, you should try and block as many of your competitors as possible. It's, I mean, the, the two bits of skill in the game are the trading aspect and the initial placement. They're the big bits of they're skill. The, they're the huge parts of skill, definitely. Yeah. Then there's lots of opportunities to micro-optimise throughout the game as well. So White spilt their settlements. So White has got three points as well as Orange has got three. Um, and White is close to getting the longest road. He needs two more roads. I believe that is a second city for Ricardo. Ricardo has taken a huge lead in this game. Yeah, and especially if eights and fours are rolled, he's getting four resources for every eight and every four. I wonder if someone just traded with him there. I, I believe don't... he did. He was he was angling for a trade. He was looking for a trade, but it seems crazy to trade with him. He traded four brick for something. I don't know if he needed uh. the. I don't know if he got one resource and then traded four brick for the other one he needed, but he might have just tried to get a. A grain for cheap, but no, he's offering a grain, I think. It looks like Mike has just built a road and settlement, and he's got uh, onto the 83. So now he's got access to the grain 8. As ah, well. so he's come around the corner, yeah, to get that, which is pretty strong. And if Mike can connect his roads up, he'll get the longest road as well, although Brick doesn't come as easily to him as it does to Demis. But he does get more wood than the others. He does, yes, he does. So it depends on the rolls, as, as, it, as it does in this game. You can have the perfect start, but the rolls might just not be kind to you. That's a six again. Still no seven being rolled. So if you're leading then, and people are trying to handicap you by rolling sevens, do you think a development card strategy going for the largest army will be better than just trying to expand? That's one way to counter someone putting the rubber on you. To to get uh, to buy development cards and pick up knights and then move the robber away. But I wouldn't say that's the primary motivation of choosing that strategy. It's more of a, of a consequence of the resources you have. Okay, so in this case, so like now he's got two cities, Ricardo might be looking for a development card strategy. Definitely. Because he's got, he's heavy in ore and he's got the best sheep and the best grain on the board. Yes. Mm. If he rolls a four, followed by a ten, that's two okay. development cards from straight away. Yeah, so he's leading on four, but everyone else has got three now. Um, Demis has just built his third settlement, and he's got a port now. 
Although it's next to a 12, so it's not that great a spot, is it? I think the port, uh, the port that uh, Mike's got down the bottom with the 8 and the 3 is a much better spot to get. I think the players shouldn't really be trading with Ricardo right now since he's in such a dominant position. But now that he's built his two cities, he doesn't. He has actually specific things he's trading for, isn't there? So, like, they might offer. They might offer him if he's got lots of ore. They might offer him more ore because he's, he can't use it as effectively as he could before. I think Ricardo just rolled a ten, or a ten was rolled. It looks like Ricardo's hand. He's, he's going to buy two two development cards next turn. Okay. Given. I think he's got eight cards in his hand, given that a seven isn't rolled when it comes back to him. Yeah, he's got two sheep, three or three grain that we can see from our vantage point. And two development cards will heavily swing it in his favour, especially if he gets a soldier. He can protect himself from bad rolls. He might even get also, some... he might get a card like road building. Which would be great for him. Because he... roads don't come so easy to him. But, but he, he'd only be restricted to road building in the top, wouldn't he? Because down the bottom he's pretty blocked in. He could try and get the 10-5 spot, but truly around the top, maybe he just kind of builds around the port or maximises his chances there. It looks like Ricardo is negotiating with Mike. Oh, he does have a brick. He wants a wood. Okay. He's doing that trade, offering two for one to try and reduce his hand size as well. Oh uh, yeah, going down to seven, it can be a good idea to reduce that. Robert, the, the seven risk. He can still build two development cards though, can't he, with what he's got, but he's probably he's trying to, obviously a road might be better for him. Yes. Also, earlier on we were talking about the advantage of not building towards the centre. It worked out for Martin in this case, because he was able to get the 10, 11, 3 in the centre. But he could protect that, he, he actually built that for himself, didn't he? Because his second dwelling, he put it in a place where he kept that 10, 11, 3 open. Well, as it turned out, because the other players didn't build t towards, uh, near, near that position. But if we look at Ricardo's uh, placement of the 10, 8, 4 at the bottom, his road is quite wasted, because mm. uh, Mike's beaten him to the race. And uh, yeah, Mike's beaten him both sides as well, I believe. He's just beat to the other place he could have tried to build if he got road building. He yes. could have built where that 10-5 spot is with the sheep and the brick. So now Ricardo's actually, although he's probably got the best position, he's got the best start, he might actually be blocked in a bit too much here. Well, he can always build towards the edge. It's not so important to get the extra resource from your new set, like your new uh, settlement, as much as just building the settlement for the victory points. So you could build around the edge of the bottom to try and get the port or another uh, spot on the eight grain. Yeah, or just, just building the settlement, even without the port, that's perfectly fine. But maybe Martin's decision to gamble to build towards the middle was a good idea because he started off on a brick and a wood, which would give him the advantage in a road race. Whereas for Ricardo, he doesn't have that same thing because he went on a green wood and a wheat spot. So he he had he he would have got some access to wood, but not to brick. But anyway, we're past that right now. Well, they've put the robber on the desert, but there still hasn't been a seven roll. That's quite amazing, actually, in this many turns in the game. It is rather unlikely, but it can happen. Six again. Let's see what Ricardo is going to do. Looks like yeah, he six, would buy two development cards. Six is a number that benefits everyone but Ricardo, isn't it? He's buying yeah. one. He's going to see what it is first, isn't he? But he can't yep. use it this turn. You can't use the development card to turn you get it unless it's a victory point card and you've won. I believe, is that right? Yes. And he's built a road because he... He managed to trade with Mike to get the wood and the brick. Okay, so he's intention and he's going to build... Oh, he's oh, got settlements. Oh, he has. He wow. must have had two brick, not two all. I must have misread that. Okay. Um, so yes, yeah, so this is a disadvantage in trading who the perceived leader, I mean he's been traded with twice and both times he's benefited, he built a city last time he traded and a settlement this time he's traded. So I remember I, I played Settlers of Catan back when it was called Settlers of Catan back in 2001 and it was the game that got me into modern board gaming. I immediately I played it at Dave Muller's house um, and uh, immediately went and bought it, I thought it was great. What was your first encounter with uh, with Catan? Catan was one of the games uh, 
I think I learned it in 2010. I, w I wasn't really playing many other Euro games. I was more of a chess and cards player at the time. But yeah, it definitely brought me into uh, more Euro games. Um, I became hugely addicted to it. I'm a big fan of the game. And I've played it countless times. It's so easy as well. It is a gateway game, but it has the strategy and the optimization you're trying to do and trying to be as efficient as you can. And it also has trading. You like games with trading, don't you? Uh, yeah, Negotiation I, lo I, love and trading. The, I love the trading aspect of Settlers, definitely. Yeah, yeah and we're old school. We keep calling it Settlers, and uh, <laughs> people nowadays don't, don't remember it's called Catan. <laughs> <laughs> it's been rebranded. I wish they'd just called it Settlers, but I guess that sounds much too much like a computer game than Catan. I don't even know what Catan means. I don't either. <laughs> So they're trying to trade again. This time, people are trying to get things off Ricardo, I believe. Martin's looking for sheep, and uh, Ricardo's asking Martin to make him an offer. And he's passed his turn, I think. I think. Yeah, he's he has. All the dice, yeah. He didn't have enough to offer. There's a three there. That does give sheep. Uh, and it does give Martin two sheep. That he, no, he didn't. That's not sheep, is it? That's all. I'm just reading it. But it gives, it gives uh, Mike sheep. It gives Mike two sheep. There we go. And Demis has built a city on his strongest spot. Uh, it doesn't seem like he's expanded that far. So obviously the nines and fives haven't been rolled as much. He might be short on wood. Because I know yeah. six has been rolled a fair bit. Demis has doubled down on the nines. He's got the, the brick nine and the ore nine. There must have been some nines for him to yeah. to get the the city. I think grain's what he's short on, isn't it? I know there's been more there's been a fair few tens. But still no robber being rolled, that's quite weird, isn't it? I don't know how much that would affect it if someone was rolled one now. Looks like Martin sta is sat with a stack of cards there. Another development card for Ricardo. He's got one face down, he hasn't played it yet, so we don't know what it is. Could be a victory point card, in fact he could have two victory point cards if he's not playing either. There's no incentive for him to play the robber just yet. No, he's, he'd be more of a defensive thing unless there's a resource he really needs. As he's far ahead in the lead. He should wait until if a seven is rolled and someone blocks him, yeah. then he should use that the knight at that point to move the robber out of the way. When you say he's far ahead in lead, he's only actually one point ahead of uh, Mike and in fact the, the other three players are on four points, aren't they? Um, but he's on five. But the fact that he's his strong point, he's got two cities on two very strong spaces. Yeah, I think building cities can be a bit harder. So I put him in the lead for that reason. Yeah, because obviously. Um, White in Martin and White has actually got all his uh, settlements. Um, Martin's also doing in, a, stuff. in a in a good position. He's yeah. favourite for longest road. Um, but the other two players have got extra settlements on spaces that aren't as good. So Blue's got one on the edge and one next to the desert, and Red's got one on the edge as well. So they're not producing as much as the other ones. You don't think that's as effective? I don't think it's as important. Just having them is a point on the board, isn't yes. it? Yes. I think the, the, the core economy of your game comes from the two starting settlements and building cities doubles your economy on those spots, which is why I like Ricardo's position. Okay. But if there's a shortage of eights and fours, then uh, who knows what might it happen. It hasn't been so far. He's done very well with them, I think. I think there's been a shortage of... Um, Given how 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 much access Red's got to brick and wood, I think he's not maybe not rolled as many as he needed to. Martin's got a huge stack of cards here. I think he's looking to build a city, but we'll see. That's what he's trying to. He's been trying to trade with. Um... Mike's making a lot of trades here. Okay, Mike's got a city, so he goes up to five points too. I suppose if everyone's trying to build a city, then trading into one's pretty hard. True. So Mike ties the lead here. Ten. 
And Mike, Mike can certainly get the longest row too. Yeah, he's not far off, is he? Couple of, well, he's only three spaces, but the fact is, if he does connect them up, it's going to be hard to beat. He's, if he connects those up with three roads, he'd be up to eight roads. Yeah, and that will be hard for um, Martin to catch up. Because if Martin connects his, he'll only have six. Because there's no incentive for Martin to try and get there first, because if... Um, Martin has just built... A settlement. Sorry, carry on, Steve. There's no incentive for Martin to try and connect his up first because if Mike ever connects his up, he'll win eight. Yes. If they both be on six, then that race to get there first is a bit more important, isn't it? Because you have to actually beat the other person to take it off them. So I believe Martin has just built onto a three to one port and he's used that to trade three grain for one ore to build a city. So that is a great turn, isn't very it? Very good turn. He did have a lot of cards, didn't he? He's built a settlement and a city with access to a port. So he goes up to six points. If he connects up the roads, he'd be on eight points. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's just taken the lead away from Ricardo. Yeah. But who knows what Ricardo's cards are? Yeah, we don't know what those cards are. He hasn't played them yet. He could be keeping them to soldiers or monopolies. Demis showing signs of frustration here with another four rolls. He can't really do anything. I think the numbers have handicapped Demis a bit. He so, looked like he had a decent starting spot, but he just hasn't been able to build much, has he? He's very heavily reliant on nines this game, and they need to come up now for him to have a shot. Like I say, nines are more more like twelve than fours, but it seems like there's quite a few fours being rolled. That can definitely help. And still no seven. We must have gone around several times around the table now, and there's been not a single seven. Demis builds a road, and he's he's looking looking very uh, slightly frustrated, isn't he, with his uh, look. Is that another four, is it? No, it's not. Yeah, it is a four. It's another four, yeah. And that gets Ricardo five cards because he's got five yes. on the four. The Rob has still not been rolled. I think two fours in a row. He's just picked up ten cards and two rolls. Yeah. He should have enough to build and give him fours getting him wood and He doesn't ore. have access to a port, though. He doesn't, but he's got two sheep, so if he can trade into some grain, he can get some more development cards. But he has to trade out an exchange rate of four to one. Yeah. And the other players... Probably don't want to help him right now. Certainly Martin doesn't. Maybe Demis will, if he gets a very favourable offer. Yeah. But... <laughs> That's that. So he's exactly. actually he's, he's in a weak spot for trading, isn't he? Because the players know if they don't trade with him, the fact that he's going to lose a lot of cards to either the robber or to trading with yes. the bank. Usually it's a terrible idea to end your turn with seven or more cards, because it leaves you open to a seven being rolled and that happens with quite high frequency if there were three uh, well four rolls well it could go it turn. could go seven ten seven then he loses cards twice isn't he no because once you roll a seven you lose half of your cards yeah and then a ten gets him five back or four okay. back i mean it's possible yeah a uh, three back sorry well not a ten but a four four oh he's revealed uh he's revealed year of plenty I believe oh this is, is the perfect card for him right now because uh, he goes for Two bricks. Yeah, because he's got he's got the wood and he's going to build three roads. Three roads. Wow. Which will get him the longest road, I believe. Is this? Oh no, it's two roads and a two roads and um, a settlement. And a settlement. I think. He uses the four ore for his grain. Yeah. So where's he going to build it? Is he going to be it's going to be around the top. So he's going to monopolise on this four and he gets a port as well. And he's also threatening longest road with another another. Another road, road. gets him it. Yeah. Yeah. So how many points does this put him on? We can see five points, no, six points on the board. Yeah, which ties with uh, Martin, I believe. Martin's got six as well. But if he's got a victory point there, he just needs another road and a point, and that could be 10 points. The other players yeah. have to be careful. I think now's the time for Martin and Mike to connect up their roads and... To stop him getting it. Yes. That's actually how I lost my game against Ricardo. He, he just sneaks in with the longest road and stole it off me. But, I mean, Mike's quite a way off of doing it. This has to be Martin's road to take it. Martin's two roads away, Mike's three. It looks like Ricardo's also bought a development card. So if that's a point, he could win it with the longest road next turn. So they have to they have to try and take the longest road now, do they? They should do it now. 
It's unlikely they're both points, though. There's not that many points in the deck. It'd be very unlikely. There are only five victory points in the deck of 25. So for them both to be victory points... Is... Yeah. And the one he'd held on for longest was the one on the right, the one he's played, Deer of Plenty. Yeah. So it's not like... Yeah. That's a three. It's one of the numbers Ricardo hasn't got. No, 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 he has a three. He, he, has, he has a double O at the he's top, on, yeah. He's on 8, 4, 10. 11. 3, 4. Yeah. 8. Mm. So you think it's between Mike, uh, sorry, Martin and Ricardo at the moment, then? They're both it looks on 6. Like, it looks like uh, Ricardo is the front runner again, and Martin is in strong contention. If Martin can get the longest road, and Mike doesn't take it off him, then Martin will be on 8. Yes. Although Martin's actually, it takes Martin a while to build another dwelling, isn't it? Another settlement. Because if he gets the longest road, he's not using roads to further his settlement building, isn't it? It is. That's true. Whereas Ricardo can build cities. Yes. Yeah. And Demis has just been a bit hamstrung with his numbers, has he? He's, only, he's, he's got four points and he's looking to build another settlement on the right. It doesn't look like he's in contention here at all. Yeah, we just he doesn't got many cards either, has he? He needs a miracle right now. What about Mike? Mike's on five points. Mike is on five points. Yeah, and if he can get the longest road, it's going to be hard for Martin to take it off him. He's got no cards right now. Mike, he's got quite a few cards. No, no development cards. Okay. Uh, that's the other point. Uh, Ricardo has played. He has. He hasn't played. A knight yet, but he does have development cards. No one else has gone for them yet, so he could be the front runner to yep. try and try and get the largest army. So if it comes around to his next turn and they're both knights, you expect him to play one. He possibly. Yeah. yeah. They think he's got eight points already. Demis is saying that Ricardo is on eight points. So Demis is claiming that these two are victory point cards. That's, that's is, is that just hypothetical or is this hypothetical? Uh, He's a, he only just drew a development card now, so I don't think he would suggest that the one he drew now is a, a victory point. But but this is like a worst case scenario. So Demis yeah. is saying don't trade with him because he could be he could be about to yeah. win. Demis doesn't want trades to happen here unless they're with himself. Sure. But he's only got two cards. He's unlikely to want you know have anything that people want. So uh, he's building a development card. It's a shame we haven't got those under the camera, uh, under the table cameras like Poker has, so we can see what the development cards are. That would be brilliant. Another eight rolls, demonstrating more signs of frustration. Yeah. Understandably so. The the dice have not been kind to him this game. No. How many people entered the competition? I think there were 61 players this time, roughly wow. around 60. So, uh, a pretty good so turnout. Do you need to win? Do you need to kind of your best? Your record needs to be win-win second or something, does it? Roughly that. Win-win second, win-win third. Uh, might get you to the final table. And if it's a tie, it goes on number of victory points per game or something. Yes, it's not actually what position you finish. It's the number of victory points you get. A, w so a win would actually get you 11 points, 10 plus a bonus point for the win. Okay. So. Ah, uh, so win win second, and if your second was with nine, but win win second and second was with five, you're doing badly. Exactly. Okay. And Ricardo pipped you, did he, in the game that knocked you out of contention? Yes. Was it a game you didn't score very well in then? I think I got seven points, roughly. But he snuck the quick end of the game and you failed to get extra points. I think he, he rolled uh, like forward in, in two turns, and that was longest road and the game. And he, he also uh, he, he has this thing, he likes to deliver a speech before a victory. So, <laughs> after he rolled those cards, he w talked to everyone around the table, gave him a bit of a compliment, and he's, he's quite a showman. And then, uh, <laughs> then he revealed that he'd won. In he, poker, that would be quite rude. It would be considered a slow roll, like mm. to have the winning hand, but not to show your opponents. But Ricardo's um, a very nice guy, a, a good but gentleman, so I'll let him off for that. Having played with him before, then you kind of knew it was coming? Uh, possibly. <laughs> I mean... It's still, it's still uh, a little bit disrespectful in some ways, but yeah. I'll accept that from him. 
If he's going around complimenting other players, I don't think it can be uh, that disrespectful. I mean, a, a slow roll is... Considered... Oh, oh we've, uh, Martin has just built the longest road, I believe. He's got and a he's built a settlement. Oh, no, he hasn't. No, he's not quite... Oh, he has connected them up. Yeah, it's just a bit lopsided. There we go. Ricardo's just straightened it up. So he's got the longest road. So Martin's on eight points. So it's actually Ricardo's only on six, plus two development cards that we don't know what they are. But Martin, Martin's uh, path to two more points might be difficult, although he's got a development card in front of him. So, so he could be on nine. He could be on nine. But that tenth is still... Tenth, it needs to be a city, I guess. Yeah. The city's probably the quickest way to get it. Or extra point. two roads and a settlement is possible. Two roads and a settlement might be good, because then you defend the longest road from Mike. Yes. Mike can still take it off you by building two more roads. I mean, three, it's still three more roads, Mike, isn't it? Yeah. So it looks like, without any, without Mike doing something drastic, it looks like Martin's going to keep the longest road for the foreseeable future. And more importantly, it stops Ricardo getting it. Because if Ricardo has got two victory point cards, one more road would have won him the game. No, because um, uh, Martin's just taken the longest road. With... Yeah, so if Martin didn't do that, yeah, yeah, he would, that would he would have stopped. You're right, Steve. Yeah, that was a good move by Martin. We were suggesting he should do. Do that last turn. He's, I believe Mike was trading with them as well, so I don't know how much that helped him do it. That, that can often happen in settlers where one player is threatening to win, so the other players cooperate to delay that player from winning. By, by doing a trade that isn't necessarily what they would do for their own self-interest, but just keeps the game going. Well, they, they will still try and make it in their self-interest, but as much so as possible. Demis makes an interesting play, uh, point about four-player settlers. He thinks that towards the end, it becomes a game of diplomacy, which I do agree with. So Demis is, uh, he's got a man resigned to his fate, I think. He's just sat back with his cards face down while everyone else is looking at their cards, trying to think of trades they want. Yes. I don't know quite how many cards he's got. Is he just two there? Do we know what ports that uh, Ricardo's got? Is it a three to one port, is it? I think it's a three to one port, so evenly spaced out, aren't they? I think it's a sheep port at the top because okay. he traded two sheep for a resource, I believe, at one okay. point. But I could be wrong. So sheep port's not great for him, is it? Because although he has got the best sheep spot, he's not getting that many sheep in. Yeah. A 10 gets him two sheep, which is effectively one resource of the sheep port. I think Ricardo's path to victory is probably to buy some development cards and play some knights, get three knights on the board. And yeah, that's, like that's... we were saying, if these were knights, he'd probably be playing one now if they were both knights. If they were both knights. We still haven't had a seven rolled. I don't think I've ever seen a game go this long without Wait, a seven Wait, has a seven rolled. still not been rolled? No, it's a, the robber's still in the desert. That is incredible. Yeah. I've, because I don't know what the from Demis's point of view, a seven roll is good for him because he's probably going to actually not block a spot that Demis has. It's going to block a spot that Ricardo or Martin have. Yes, and also it's gonna it's gonna like uh, Martin. Take... Uh, so Ricardo's just built a city. So uh, Martin has got uh, so Ricardo's got uh, seven points on board plus two face down development cards. So he's not going for the largest. Oh, he's bought another development card. He's bought another three. one. So if they were all points, he's won. But they, they aren't all points. If there were if there were two knights there, I would have expected him to have played one. So... Yeah, I agree. So he's, he's likely got, it looks like he's on nine points to me. You have to play your development cards before buying anything, do you? Or can no, you, you can play at any point during your turn. Apart from you can't play you the You can't turn. buy one and then play. You can't, you can't buy one. Unless it's a victory point. So that's why he's put it side on, because that's the one he's just bought. Sure. But if he picked up another soldier and one of the two face downs were soldiers, you'd expect him to play one. Yeah. Trying because, to get to the largest army. Yes, because the timing can be very important. He doesn't want to... Because you can only play one development card per turn. You don't want to have knights waiting in reserve and then... Pick up your third knight and have not, to play, not yet played one. Yes, and then what might happen is Martin might win. Gets 10 points during the turn. Uh, you would have played your third knight. And you lose the game by one turn because you timed it incorrectly. That would be a disaster for... Ricardo, and I don't think he would make such an error. So it's actually a, a worse for the players then. The fact that he hasn't played a knight means that he hasn't got two knights. Well, on the other hand, having two knights could be an advantage for Ricardo because because he's on. Let's assume he's got one is victory. Another point. three. That's well, not a three, is it? He's got seven points on the board. If he has one victory point, it's actually better for him to have two knights because then that would 
he just needs three to play three knights, and that would bring him from eight to ten. He, he might actually dislike having two victory points like that. Ah, uh, because but now he just needs one city to win. He needs one city, but it's probably easier to get one knight, one one development card. Mm. Now there's there's not much point for him to go for the largest army as the path to victory because that would put him up to eleven. It's probably more efficient for him to build a city. Okay, he's trying to trade. But you shouldn't trade them, really. Yeah, there's no way you should trade at all. The only, the only oh, thing. Oh, so that... it's uh, Mike wants a brick, and uh, Demis and Ricardo are offering it. Yeah. Mike is going to trade with Demis, like. He should, he should do, shouldn't he? Oh. Because giving two sheep to Ricardo with a sheep port is poor, because then he gets whatever he wants. Yeah, I think Ricardo was saying I would do the trade one for one, but Mike shrewdly said. I'm not trading with you. And he traded two for one with Demis. Yeah. So that shows that Ricardo is trying to build a city then. He's not trying to build a world in another settlement. He is trying to build a city. Yeah. Trying to get. And if you can't build a city, you'll try and build a development card. Because two sheep for him would be wild. So it looks like Mike's going to do something here. Mike looks like to have about 10 cards in hand. It looks like he wants. To, hmm, he's got lots of sheep. He's going to build some roads, maybe compete for the longest road. Yeah, that's two roads. Yeah, he's competing for the longest road. That's three roads. He's got three roads. Three roads. Stole longest off road. Him. Uh, which is good for Ricardo because actually Martin, the guy who had the longest road, was actually closer to winning than Mike is. Mike's yeah, now that, on. That was a great, great news for. Mike's only Ricardo. on seven with no um, development card. And now, like, uh, Mike. And Martin are in this road race where they actually just waste resources building roads. Don't they don't get closer towards victory necessarily? They just so they need to they need to get other points and then just steal the longest road to win. Yeah, um, you've and noticed that uh, the still a seven hasn't been rolled, but Mike has played a soldier card. He got it okay. last round, and he's blocked the uh, brick that uh, Ricardo had at the top. Well, I think he's blocked it off Martin specifically because Martin's his competitor in the longest road race. Mm -hmm. So he wants to block off that brick supply so that uh, Martin won't compete with roads. But he had, he had a choice, didn't he, which brick to block? Which brick to block? Because he could have blocked the one, the other six in the middle of the board, but he's blocked the one that. Well, Ricardo blocking has. The, the six in the middle of the, in, of the board would just block Demis. He's got no interest in doing that at it all. It also blocks. Uh, it blocks Martin. Uh, Martin sure. as well. But yeah, definitely, yeah. you want to attack Martin and. Ricardo. Especially Ricardo. Oh, uh, uh, Martin's just built a city. Uh, he has, yeah, he's deciding where to put it. He's probably, he's got to be the one in the middle of the board, isn't it? He was trying to upgrade a city to a city there, but now he's got three cities in the middle of the board. So Martin's back up to seven points with a face down development card. If he can see the longest road and that development card is a victory point, yeah, he can win the game. But he has to survive this turn, I'm not sure. So if Ricardo can build a city, he wins, possibly. If Ricardo rolls a four, that could be game over. I think Ricardo's got four cities. He's only got three. Oh, one got three. The, the very top one is a, the settlement. Okay. He's moving the soldier and he's, and he's picking on Ricardo. He's trying to stop Ricardo getting the all he needs. Yeah. Uh, a four, like you said, a four would win him the game. He's also stolen the card of Ricardo. It looks like uh, Martin just picked up another soldier. At least probably not a victory point because he just... Use the soldier this turn from yeah, last. Yeah, that is yeah. So that's an, that's a, often a good sign that if someone plays one, then they've got other cards behind that they've still got a soldier in. But the chance is that Ricardo's one of his three cards is probably going to be a soldier. He's probably going to play it this turn to move it out of the way. Yes. You think? Can you play the soldier? You can play the soldier before you roll the dice, can you? You can, yeah. So he's probably going to do that if we see. Possibly, he might have another card like Monopoly, for instance. That could be quite strong. Yeah. A Monopoly card would actually let him uh, take any kind of resource off all the other players so yeah so you can take whatever he needs to build a city can't he yes there's a meme on the internet where uh, someone trades all their wheat away for the people and then plays the monopoly card to get it all back that's an excellent that. use of the monopoly card <laughs> i've not seen that meme no um, but yeah it's, you can see the other people at the table don't look very happy about it So on Demis' turn, he's thinking about doing something. He's got enough cards to do something this time, but it's taken a long time for him to get those. It's difficult to execute such a strategy that you just mentioned because to experienced players, it can become a bit obvious you've got Monopoly. Like, why else would you 
trade away your grain in some situations if you didn't have. If the grain's card. the most useful one, it, it builds three things. Depends on the situation, but if if your trades don't make sense, unless you have an monopoly card, then a strong player will realize that and not trade with you. Yeah, they'll also warn the table against trading with you. So Demis needs or and people are telling him not to trade with Ricardo. Ricardo's possibly got an ore in his hand because he used to he was generating so much before he was blocked. Demis here is probably gonna do any trade with Martin or Mike just to get an extra victory point that would improve his standings in the tournament. And this game is probably just gone from him. Yeah. So we think Martin's other card is a soldier. Because he played one. Yeah. In which case, Martin, by stealing Longsword, doesn't actually win the game. No. But actually, it takes him three roads to steal it back because Blue's longest road, so Mike's longest road is eight long and Martin's is only six. Do we think, well, the good news is that the longest road has been kept away from Ricardo. He's probably not going to get that this game. So he has to rely on soldiers and he hasn't even played a soldier yet. So I imagine he's got two victory point cards in the city is his best chance of winning it. He's thinking about playing. He's, he's played, played a soldier. soldier. As predicted. Yeah. So he would do that whether he had another one or not, we think, because. It's blocking had, his four, yeah. And if he had two, he would have played one last time. He definitely steals off Martin. Nine. Nine. That is good for Demis, but it might be too. It's definitely too late, we think. But that means another city if it goes around to him. It does. And nine, and nine is one of the few numbers that Ricardo doesn't have. A four is rolled. Yeah. This is bad news for Martin, excellent for Ricardo. Yeah, he's taking a lot, he takes five all from that. So now, if they are two victory point cards, which is, he hasn't played them for a long five time. Five all and two win. <laughs> yeah. So by the time he gets back to Ricardo, we think he's going to claim the victory possibly, if he can build a city. It seems likely. Unless a seven's rolled, because he's got... Maybe Martin's got a Monopoly card. That would be an excellent play for him. Play Monopoly for all, steal five all. And what, well, off, Ricardo, off Ricardo has just picked up Seven cards, plus he had some cards in hand, so yeah. if the seven is rolled, he might take the victory away from him. That's true. This turn, at least. As you can see, the longer the game goes on, the often, you often find yourself stacked with cards. Mike's got about 12 cards in his hand now. He's deciding what to do with them. And like Ankush said, um, passing your turn with seven cards in hand is an incorrect decision, we think. More than seven cards, definitely. At this stage... I'd expect them to use most of their cards. Yeah, and if, he, if no one's going to trade with him, he's just going to trade and build a development card or something. Yeah. How many points is Mike on? It looks like he's on... And Mike's got the longest road and five points on the board, so yep. Mike's on seven points. Um, but he's got no face-down development card, so that is seven points guaranteed. Whereas Ricardo's on seven points, face-up, but he's got two face-down cards as well. So Ricardo could be on nine. Uh, Mike's trying to trade and Demis is desperate to try and trade his sheep away he's looking for wheat I think is Demis and that confirms that he's trying to build another city but Demis is on five points he's got a face down development card but we think five points is just not going to cut it There we go. And what's Mike going to do with that sheep? Oh, he's traded. oh, it looks like he's got a sheep pot. He just traded two yeah. sheep for a grain to build a city. Yeah, so he's got another That's city. That's his eighth point. Yeah, but it's eight face-up points. There's no secret points there. Um, yeah. And he's not close to getting the largest army either. He's no. only got one soldier. And longest road might get stolen off him. Entirely it possible. could, yeah. It needs three, um, Martin still needs three roads to do a that. Seven is rolled. The first seven of the game, I believe, is the first seven of the game. And this is good because Ricardo picked up. Ricardo's got at least nine cards in his hand. He's got lots of cards and it looks yeah. like he's deciding which to discard. Oh, it'd be unlucky if Demis has to discard as well. I think he does. He rolled a nine. Yeah. To get. Uh... So, yeah, he's having to discard, and that's not fair, and he's frustrated there. He's discarding five cards, so he had ten cards in his hand. 
And I think he's also going to have one stolen as well, I imagine. That the robber's going to go back on the four spot at the top, most Definitely. likely. Although the four was just rolled, I think Ricardo's gotten a four. It might go on a green. The green eights might be a good choice. Uh, no, he's, he's trying to put it somewhere where he can steal something he wants, I think. And Demis is saying, don't steal off me, steal off Ricardo. It looks like Martin is trying to steal longest road back. Yeah, because he, he might win. Because if his face turn card's a point, if he can steal longest longest road back, he can win the game. And he's desperate for wood. And Demis is saying, well, I've only got one wood in six. Steal off someone else. And they're trying to make a deal. Don't put it there and I'll trade with you. And Ricardo says you can't do that. Because he can, he can, it's not, it's, not a, it's not a guarantee, is it? If I say I will trade with you, I don't have to in the future. It's not enforceable. No. This decision might be very key. If you don't block the four and a four comes up, you imagine that Ricardo's going to win. I mean, they must be victory point cards face down on the front there. Everyone else at the table wants Martin to put it on Ricardo and steal off Ricardo. But Martin needs that wood, I believe. Yeah. And Demis is most likely to have it. So they're Demis, trying to come Demis, up Demis with... said he has one wood in six. Whether you believe that or not, I don't know. Demis is... And they're trying to negotiate a trade now before the robber goes down. Yeah. Um, but we'll see if... They're not enforceable, are they? Because yeah. once the robber goes down, Demis can change his mind and not trade. It's true. But then that ruins future trust if they were to play other tournaments yeah. in the future. So it's a tricky decision. Generally, I like to honour my agreements here just so people can trust me. Yeah, so the people have, have berated Martin enough that he isn't he is going to pick on Ricardo, and Demis is saying, "I've got five points. This is crazy. Don't pick on me." Let's but, see if a trade happens now. Yeah. yeah. But Ricardo didn't have, definitely didn't have the wood that Martin was wanting. Martin, I think Martin, if Martin's got a face down victory point card, the longest road wins the game for Martin. Martin's got. Um, it's got seven, seven on the board. board. Face down victory point card. Which he's looking at again. He's yeah. No, it's not. Oh, buddy. That is a... Um, Year, of plenty. Year of Plenty. So he does that to buy another development card. Yeah. Because if that is road building, it looks yeah. like it's a soldier where he's put it. Although if it was a soldier, he should be playing it, shouldn't he? You can't play it. Oh, you can't play it at the turn you play it. I forgot. Another four name. rolled. And uh, fortunately, he blocked that four. Yeah. So Ricardo, I think Ricardo's been a couple of turns away from winning this, but a few sevens and steals have been enough to keep him off it. This can often happen in settlers. Don't you mean Catan? <laughs> <laughs> I'll always call it settlers, and people will know what I mean, I think. I'll always call it settlers too. That's a nine, so that's good for Demis. Again, he's a bit out of it now. It looks like there's very, few, very little ore in the supply yeah there's an interesting rule if if not if every player can't get the resource that is a seven is it so that means it has to move it means it has to move ah and Demis i think has just lost, Demis has just lost half of them yeah but ricardo's been stolen from enough that ricardo's actually not discarding for the first time so it's close then i think it's between martin and ricardo mike could sneak in there yeah, but Mike's actually struggling to get... The ninth and 10th point. Yeah. Because he's still only got one soldier, and to get two more points, he's going to need to build two more roads and a, and a settlement twice, or two cities, and he's just not generating the grain. Or the ore. He's, the ore's all at the top, and he's only got one ore spot, although it is a nine. Yeah. 
So it seems like a no collective effort to stop Ricardo winning. I'm not sure they realise how close Martin might be to winning now. It's true. Although Martin might not have a victory point card now. We thought it was a victory point card before. Yeah, Ricardo's been stolen from again, which, you should, which is the correct strategy from the collective three other players. Definitely. Yeah. But the four's now open, so again, if the four's roll before Ricardo's turn, then we could see a winner. So, in terms of the overall play of the year standings, do you get points? Do you get points towards that for where you place in the final or every event? You get points for yeah, where you place in each event, and the Settlers is actually, or the Catan is actually a very big event. For the, for the mind sports, the Pentamind World Championships, because the formula for the Pentamind um, rewards tournaments where there are more players, and there's a lot of Pentamind points at stake here. Okay, because this is one of the largest tournaments we've got. Definitely. Okay. And it's also a big tournament for the Eurogames World Championships, which uh, I believe Mike, yeah, Mike won last year, and Ricardo came second or third, I believe. So. Okay, it's and a big that is for them. that is at this event or a separate event. It's at this event. Okay, so like a subset of all the events. Of it? all the Euro okay. games, yes. Okay. So you, <coughs> you can go along to this, and I can say I'm a Euro game player. That if I can play in all the Euro games, they won't clash with each other, and I can I can go towards the Euro game yes. championship. Okay. Whereas if you want the abstract games, I imagine they won't clash either. Yeah, that's right. Um, so that's all the coverage we were given, I'm afraid. We were told the end result was that Ricardo did win. Uh, it would only have been a turn or two in the making. He won by building his uh, last city. He did have two victory point cards secret. So Ricardo did win this event. Uh, how do you think it played, Ankush? I thought he had a very strong start from the beginning and uh, looks like he played very well. The other, t the other players did slow the game down by not trading with him at the end. Um, Ricardo could have possibly won earlier, apart from a couple of robbers uh, stealing half his resources. Yeah, that's to be expected in Settlers. The other players are going to try and stop him, but it didn't look like... It looks like Martin might have been close, but it didn't end up that way. Yeah. And we, it looks like we missed Ricardo's speech at the end, but okay. there you go. Um, so anyway, thanks for joining us. We've been Board Game Opinions. I'm Steve. I'm Ankush. And we'll see you again for a different event. Thank you very much. Thank you.